so it's easy to be drawn in by the puppies, but why you really stop and you invest is because you see, you see the moment where that investment makes a difference in somebody's life. I invest in independence because I had the pleasure of going to the two week training class and I got to see amazing uh, graduates as they began to bond with their dogs. One of the things that I love about it is that you can be involved in so many different ways. So everything from financially supporting the organization to puppy raising to volunteering. It's time, energy and, and money of course, but it's clearly making a difference in other people's lives. When you have that kind of impact on somebody's life, it's easy um, to keep giving and keep coming back. I initially got involved with Canine Companions for Independence because I wanted to change a life. And in the end, I discovered that the life that was changed was not the recipient or the graduate. The life that was changed was mine. Being a part of Canine Companions program staff truly is the perfect job. I get to lead a team of very talented instructors that also are very passionate about the mission. While we all love dogs, we really enjoy people and we appreciate the difference the dogs can make for someone. Gratefully, the staff has grown in experience and in size in recent years, and so this has been a blessing. However, the facility has not. Our training space is very outdated. Our kennels are outdated. The first and foremost benefit that we foresee is the on-campus housing for our graduates or our team training students. Currently those individuals pay between $1,500 and $2,000 to stay in a hotel um, during their two-week experience and so not having that expense and not having the challenges that come with renting a hotel room that may or may not be accessible for their needs is huge. We will become a positive part of the new Albany community, but we're also placing dogs in 14 states. And so those individuals that are coming to us and receiving a dog, going home and becoming differently integrated into their communities are also having a positive effect. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Hanna. I've worked at the Columbus Zoo for 40 years, and I've been a supporter of Canine Companions for nearly just as long. Canine Companions remains the oldest and largest provider of assistant dogs in the country. They also advocate for children, adults, and veterans with disabilities, and they lead the way in canine health and research. It is sure amazing that the training facility that I helped open in 1990 is the same training facility that is being utilized today in Delaware, Ohio, over 28 years later. I was excited to hear that thanks to their continued growth and expansion, Canine Companions will be opening a new North Central Campus in New Albany. This will allow them to grow their mission and it will become a focus for community engagement and regional partnerships. The sky's the limit for Canine Companions. I can't wait to see what they do next. We got involved with Canine Companions 10 years ago, and then wouldn't you know, um, a few years later, my husband one day said, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's raise a puppy. It's been the most rewarding experience I can think of in my life. We've, we've loved it so much. It's really just expanded our, our life in so many ways. I love to talk about Shruthi and Gambit, um, the puppy, the first dog we raised for Canine Companions. She told us about how goofy Gambit was and we shared stories about some of his quirks and wonderful things about him and you know I think it was just one of those times in your life where you thought this is what it's all about this is why we went on this journey with this amazing dog and why it's okay to say goodbye to him the campus in New Albany is so overdue we, really the, the organization is so deserving and I know that my neighbors and the businesses here want them here tomorrow and we can't wait. We just um, need the support to make that a reality and it's the last region in the country to have a campus of this kind and we hope it's going to be the best one yet. With this new facility, new campus, everyone involved with Canine Companions will benefit and I can't wait to see dogs, more dogs in New Albany with the vests, with the Canine Companion vests.
This is Canine Companions Facility Dog HUD the second, uh, and he works here at the hospital with us. He has a little badge that he wears um, that says MD on it, and even the physicians that'll walk by in the morning and say, good morning, Dr. HUD, and interact with him, and I know that that impact right there really starts off a day or really impacts how they might react in the day by seeing him. Usually we try and do some mental skills like training, so like he, by walking with him and giving him commands, it gives us gives me the idea of mind over the body, and it's helping train me to better myself for the real world situations when I have to control myself. He's so gentle. He's so intuitive to what the needs are of those patients in reading a room that the patients feel comforted, they feel safe with him, and they're able to practice some of those cognitive behavioral aspects that help them to be able to assert themselves and express their needs and thoughts and practice it with HUD. It really helps out and it's it's not only a mental relief, but it's also that mentality of just um, don't give up and you'll have people with you and that's, that's the great thing about HUD. I invest in independence because I love making people happy and more independent. I'm a nine-time puppy raiser and I raise because it is so fulfilling and so heartwarming. I was looking um, for something to do to give back and change somebody else's life, but what I didn't realize is that it would change my own. Being a first-time puppy raiser, this guy right here finally gave me that purpose. So I'm very grateful for my CCI community. He's given us so much in raising him. We enjoy the puppy raising so much, and especially what we see what they do with our graduates. Where else can you get that kind of feedback immediately from the puppies when you're working with them, and then you see it translate into the feedback from the graduates when they, they receive the puppy and the team? Watching the graduates get their placement dogs is absolutely incredible. I invest in independence because I like to see people smile. I volunteer for Canine Companions for Independence because there's very few places I can think of that I, you can volunteer every day and that's what you do when you raise a puppy. Raise a puppy, change a life. There's something about volunteering and doing this kind of work that's amazing on a human level. I see so many frowns turn into smiles just because I have a dog with me. It's difficult because we do fall in love with the pup while we have them, but we have the goal in mind from the day we get them that we want them to be a service dog. And the only way they can do that is if they leave us. They have to leave us. And in light of the new center, that, that will help us as puppy raisers. Having a facility that's better organized and, and easier to go into and, and bathe the dog and, and take care of them to, to get, get them ready to bring home with us. The center we have now is basically like having a size 10 foot and you're cramming it into a size 6 shoe. These dogs are like a bank account. If you make periodic deposits over a long period of time, like we do on these pups, after the completion of all the training, that's a pretty rich dog. That account is full. So it's easy to be drawn in by the puppies, but why you really stop and you invest is because you see, you see the moment where that investment makes a difference in somebody's life. I invest in independence because I had the pleasure of going to the two week training class and I got to see amazing uh, graduates as they began to bond with their dogs. One of the things that I love about it is that you can be involved in so many different ways. So everything from financially supporting the organization, to puppy raising, to volunteering. It's time, energy, and, and money, of course, but it's clearly making a difference in other people's lives. When you have that kind of impact on somebody's life, um, it's easy um, to keep giving and keep coming back. I initially got involved with Canine Companions for Independence because I wanted to change a life. And in the end, I discovered that the life that was changed was not the recipient or the graduate life that was changed was mine. Being a 
part of Canine Companions program staff truly is the perfect job. I get to lead a team of very talented instructors that also are very passionate about the mission. While we all love dogs, we really enjoy people and we appreciate the difference the dogs can make for someone. Gratefully, the staff has grown in experience and in size in recent years, and so this has been a blessing. However, the facility has not. Our training space is very outdated. Our kennels are outdated. The first and foremost benefit that we foresee is the on-campus housing for our graduates or our team training students. Currently those individuals pay between $1,500 and $2,000 to stay in a hotel um, during their two-week experience and so not having that expense and not having the challenges that come with renting a hotel room that may or may not be accessible for their needs is huge. We will become a positive part of the new Albany community but we're also placing dogs in 14 states. And so those individuals that are coming to us and receiving a dog, going home and becoming differently integrated into their communities are also having a positive effect. Hi everyone, I'm Jack Hanna. I've worked at the Columbus Zoo for 40 years and I've been a supporter of Canine Companions for nearly just as long. Canine Companions remains the oldest and largest provider of assistant dogs in the country. They also advocate for children, adults, and veterans with disabilities, and they lead the way in canine health and research. It is sure amazing that the training facility that I helped open in 1990 is the same training facility that is being utilized today in Delaware, Ohio, over 28 years later. I was excited to hear that thanks to their continued growth and expansion, Canine Companions will be opening a new North Central campus in New Albany. This will allow them to grow their mission and it will become a focus for community engagement and regional partnerships. The sky's the limit for Canine Companions. I can't wait to see what they do next. We got involved with Canine Companions 10 years ago and then wouldn't you know, um, a few years later my husband one day said let's, let's do it. Let's, let's raise a puppy. It's been the most rewarding experience I can think of in my life. We've, we've loved it so much. It's really just expanded our, our life in so many ways. I love to talk about Shruthi and Gambit, um, the puppy, the first dog we raised for Canine Companions. She told us about how goofy Gambit was and we shared stories about some of his quirks and wonderful things about him. And you know, I think it was just one of those times in your life where you thought this is what it's all about. This is why we went on this journey with this amazing dog and why it's okay to say goodbye to him. The campus in New Albany is, is so overdue. We, really, the, the organization is so deserving and I know that my neighbors and the businesses here want them here tomorrow and we can't wait. We just um, need the support to make that a reality and it's the last region in the country to have a campus of this kind, and we hope it's gonna be the best one yet. With this new facility, new campus, everyone involved with Canine Companions will benefit. And I can't wait to see dogs, more dogs in New Albany with the vests, with the Canine Companion vests. This is Canine Companions facility dog, HUD the uh, second, and he works here at the hospital with us. He has a little badge that he wears um, that says MD on it, and even the physicians that'll walk by in the morning and say, good morning, Dr. HUD, and interact with him, and I know that that impact right there really starts off a day or really impacts how they might react in the day by seeing him. Usually we try and do some mental skills like training, so like he, by walking with him and giving him commands, it gives us gives me the idea of mind over the body, and it's helping train me to better myself for the real world situations when I have to control myself. He's so gentle. He's so intuitive to what the needs are of those patients in reading a room that the patients feel comforted, they feel safe with him, and they're able to practice some of those cognitive behavioral aspects that help them to be able to assert themselves and express their needs and thoughts and practice it with HUD. It really helps out and it's, it's not only a mental relief, but it's also that mentality of just um, don't give up and you'll have people with you and that's, 
That's the great thing about HUD. I invest in independence because I love making people happy and more independent. I'm a nine-time puppy raiser and I raise because it is so fulfilling and so heartwarming. I was looking um, for something to do to give back and change somebody else's life, but what I didn't realize is that it would change my own. Being a first-time puppy raiser, this guy right here finally gave me that purpose. So I'm very grateful for my CCI community. He's given us so much in raising him. We enjoy the puppy raising so much, and especially what we see what they do with our graduates. Where else can you get that kind of feedback immediately from the puppies when you're working with them, and then you see it translate into the feedback from the graduates when they, they receive the puppy and the team. Watching the graduates get their placement dogs is absolutely incredible. I invest in independence because I like to see people smile. I volunteer for Canine Companions for Independence because there's very few places I can think of that I, you can volunteer every day and that's what you do when you raise a puppy. Raise a puppy, change a life. There's something about volunteering and doing this kind of work that's amazing on a human level. I see so many frowns turn into smiles just because I have a dog with me. It's difficult because we do fall in love with the pup while we have them, but we have the goal in mind from the day we get them that we want them to be a service dog. And the only way they can do that is if they leave us. They have to leave us. And in light of the new center, that, that will help us as puppy raisers having a facility that's better organized and, and easier to go into and, and bathe the dog and, and take care of them to, to get, get them ready to bring home with us. The center we have now is basically like having a size 10 foot and you're cramming it into a size 6 shoe. These dogs are like a bank account. If you make periodic deposits over a long period of time, like we do on these pups, after the completion of all the training, that's a pretty rich dog. That account is full. So it's easy to be drawn in by the puppies, but why you really stop and you invest is because you see, you see the moment where that investment makes a difference in somebody's life. I invest in independence because I had the pleasure of going to the two week training class and I got to see amazing uh, graduates as they began to bond with their dogs. One of the things that I love about it is that you can be involved in so many different ways. So everything from financially supporting the organization, to puppy raising, to volunteering. It's time, energy, and, and money, of course, but it's clearly making a difference in other people's lives. When you have that kind of impact on somebody's life, um, it's easy um, to keep giving and keep coming back. I initially got involved with Canine Companions for Independence because I wanted to change a life. And in the end, I discovered the life that was changed was not the recipient or the graduate. The life that was changed was mine. Being a part of Canine Companions program staff truly is the perfect job. I get to lead a team of very talented instructors that also are very passionate about the mission. While we all love dogs, we really enjoy people and we appreciate the difference the dogs can make for someone. Gratefully, the staff has grown in experience and in size in recent years, and so this has been a blessing. However, the facility has not. Our training space is very outdated. Our kennels are outdated. The first and foremost benefit that we foresee is the on-campus housing for our graduates or our team training students. Currently those individuals pay between $1,500 and $2,000 to stay in a hotel um, during their two-week experience and so not having that expense and not having the challenges that come with renting a hotel room that may or may not be accessible for their needs is huge. We will become a positive part of the new Albany community, but we're also placing dogs in 14 states. And so those individuals that are coming to us and receiving a dog, going home and becoming 
differently integrated into their communities are also having a positive effect. We got involved with Canine Companions 10 years ago, and then wouldn't you know, um, a few years later, my husband one day said, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's raise a puppy. It's been the most rewarding experience I can think of in my life. We've, we've loved it so much. It's really just expanded our, our life in so many ways. I love to talk about Shruthi and Gambit, um, the puppy, the first dog we raised for Canine Companions. She told us about how goofy Gambit was and we shared stories about some of his quirks and wonderful things about him. And, you know, I think it was just one of those times in your life where you thought this is what it's all about. This is why we went on this journey with this amazing dog and why it's okay to say goodbye to him. The campus in New Albany is so overdue. We, really, the, the organization is so deserving and I know that my neighbors and the businesses here want them here tomorrow and we can't wait. We just um, need the support to make that a reality and it's the last region in the country to have a campus of this kind and we hope it's going to be the best one yet. With this new facility, new campus, everyone involved with Canine Companions will benefit and I can't wait to see dogs, more dogs in New Albany with the vests, with the Canine Companion vests. This new campus will become the amazing heartbeat, the amazing home for Canine Companions in our central region, connecting us more deeply to our community, allowing us to better serve our graduates, and bringing together the volunteers, the puppy raisers, and the supporters who make up this amazing Canine Companions family. Hi, I'm Lauren, and this is Teddy. When I received my first service dog from North Central Region, the weather was nasty and snowy. It took me more time and energy to arrive to class safely. This campus will mean participants will not only have less of a financial burden by not having to stay in a hotel, but it will also reduce any physical obstacles and energy output getting to class. Hello, I'm Tony Rosselli, President of Rosselli Construction Company. All of us at Rosselli want to say congratulations to Megan and K9 Companions on your new home. Rosselli is honored to have been a partner in this special project, bringing your dream to reality. The state-of-the-art campus will house volunteers, students, and pups from 14 states all around the Midwest. The project team's mission was to create a model going forward for all all K9 Companion facilities that accounts for all accessibility needs for their clients while enhancing the kennel and training spaces for all for those most adorable dogs. I'm proud to say that the team delivered on that mission in addition to completing the project ahead of schedule and returning some savings back to Canine Companions.
The new campus is a testament to the outstanding job all the personnel in the North Central region has done to serve people with disabilities. The new campus also provides an opportunity to serve even more people while also removing the cost of a hotel room while waiting to join their new best friend. I am really excited about our new campus. There are so many pluses, but the thing I love the most are the guest rooms. This means that the cost of a hotel room will no longer prohibit someone with a disability from receiving a life-changing companion. I learned about Canine Companions for Independence through longtime supporter and puppy raiser, Katie Chattis. I had just moved to Columbus and I thought, wow, what a great organization to have here. I believe that animals enrich our lives and working dogs are a shining example. You hear a lot about how being a puppy raiser is a great volunteer job. Well, I have the best volunteer job. I'm a volunteer for serving lunch during teen training. I get to meet and talk to the recipients and their families, see the actual training, and watch everybody interact with the dogs. It's a privilege a lot of folks in the chain don't get to have. The new center is going to make a huge difference in everybody's life. The recipients are so happy to be matched with the dogs. They would go anywhere to tell you the truth, but to be able to train and stay in one place that accommodates their needs, they can get to know each other. It becomes more of a community. It's just an ideal situation. And my husband and I are happy to support it. And I want, I'm on the national board and I want to thank you all donors, staff there in North Central, and all the people who have worked to bring this center to fruition. What's going to happen now is that our graduates, our students, are going to be able to live in the dorm when they're in team training. It makes such a difference. They build a sense of camaraderie that just doesn't happen without the dormitories. So thank you very much for allowing this all to happen. We're so excited for the families coming to the new campus. Having the common areas where they can get to know their classmates will create friendships and a support system to last long beyond the training. Spending two weeks in a hotel can be difficult for both accessibility and financial reasons. Having dorms on site for future graduates will be a game changer. My service dog, Seda, is excited that the dogs will have a new kennel and play area. First of all, congratulations, Canine Companions for Independence, North Central Region, for opening this beautiful, new, spacious campus. My name is Dr. Rustin Moore, and I'm the Dean of The Ohio State University College of Veterinary Medicine. I've seen the drawings and some photos, and I especially look forward to a behind-the-scenes tour, which is already scheduled in the near future. The new campus will allow us to expand our veterinary medicine outreach program and provide our veterinary students throughout their four years of education with opportunities to obtain more hands-on experiences with these well-behaved dogs to help build their competencies and confidence. The campus will provide our students with an opportunity to connect with another community partner and learn about the importance of health in the assistance dog industry and to reinforce the important aspects of social awareness cultural competencies and civic responsibility in the veterinary profession and in our lives individually. Hello, as a volunteer puppy raiser, I'm so excited about our new campus. We will be able to provide people with disabilities on campus housing free of charge. This is Wavy. He will enter professional training at our new campus next year. For as long as I've been associated with Canine Companions for Independence, First as a volunteer and now as a board member, our goal and our vision was to have a full service campus where we could serve so many more children, adults, and veterans with disabilities. This new campus will allow our recipients and their families to stay comfortably on site during training, as well as being able to interact and engage with their fellow students. And this incredible facility will also benefit our amazing, talented staff and we are thrilled that they have this new space now to be able to really help improve the lives of so many. Congratulations, CCI. I couldn't be more proud to be part of this incredible organization.
Welcome to the grand opening of the new North Central Campus. Today we are joined by over 450 of you virtually and by our regional leadership and staff here locally. We couldn't be more excited to celebrate this moment with our graduates, puppy raisers, volunteers, donors, board members, and staff from around the country and around our 14 state region. We began building this dream many, many years ago. Our Delaware facility opened in 1991 and supported a graduating class that was typically about five students. We were able to accommodate all of our program needs and our staff at that time, and it was a wonderful facility and it has brought so many memories and so many firsts to all of us today. Many of you also knew, know that we outgrew that space years ago. Our classes have gotten bigger. Puppy class happens three times a day instead of just one. Staff have doubled or tripled into offices and events began happening in other places. So it was time to look at a new place and a new facility so that we could be ready for the future of Canine Companions. In 2015, we purchased 16 acres of land in New Albany, Ohio to build a campus complete with accessible dorms and, ex and enhanced kennels. In 2016, we began our capital campaign to raise $20 million. We started with support from our organizational leadership by both our national and our regional board who stepped up and told everyone that this was an important project for Canine Companions and they were all behind it. In 2017, we engaged our construction team and began to design this campus. So many people took part in that understanding from our regions across the country what worked, what was on their wish list, working with other kenneling facilities around the region to understand drainage systems and the newest animal science, and working with our community to figure out ways that we could further engage people with our mission. That's what we were after. So we began our building process. In 2018, we launched the public phase of our capital campaign. This is the largest campaign in the history of Canine Companions, and we are happy to share today over 3,000 donors have participated with us and raised over $16.2 million. In 2019, we broke ground on our new campus. This 18-month construction project was completed on time and on budget. I'm so excited to say that most recently, we were also able to reduce the overall cost of the project to $19.6 million. And we are working on a remaining $3 million goal to be raised to complete the fundraising for this project. In honor of our grand opening, we've received a very special matching gift opportunity from the Babcock Family Foundation. They will be matching all gifts up to $250,000 through the end of this month. If you're interested in being a part of this really special campus, we encourage you to consider giving online today or working with our staff. I can't tell you how special it has been in the past few weeks to walk around and see names of all of the Canine Companions family around this campus. Today, we are gathered to celebrate the hard work, patience, expertise, and incredibly heartfelt donations that have built this campus. I want to start by thanking the leaders of this organization for their vision. Our national board joined us and helped us to get here. They saw the need. They saw the progress being made in the North Central region, and they saw the vision for the future of Canine Companions. And I want to thank each and every one of them for getting behind this project. 
I wanna thank our regional board and our campaign committee who over the past four years have been our boots on the ground. They've been opening doors, introducing new people, finding gifts and new opportunities for support. We wouldn't be here today without you. And all of our staff from around the country, you've given us moral support, guidance, helped us with our vision, helped understand how this campus can move canine companions forward. You also taught us that it might be good to think about bathrooms or a covered walkway in the elements or how the play yards are structured. We've learned a lot from all of you and we're grateful. And specifically to this North Central staff, I wouldn't do this with anyone else. Your heart, compassionate service and innovation is why we're here today. For so, so many years, you have been the innovators, the logistics company, and the heart of this region. And we're excited that we're all here together today. I wanna thank our donors for their support and our volunteers for their work. As I mentioned, over 3,000 volunteers, or 3,000 donors have participated to make today possible. Every donation at every level is incredibly meaningful and helped us build this campus. Today, I wanna to thank all of you. Additionally, I would like to mention those who made some exceptional gifts at $100,000 or more to this capital campaign. I would like to thank Ann Gittinger, the Babcock Family Foundation, the Belford Family, the Columbus Foundation, the estate of Christine Dillahunt, the Helen Barnes Trust, Jeannie Schultz, John and Diane Bittekoffer, the Lions Project for Canine Companions for Independence, the Miller Family, Nancy and Dr. Rex Riggs, the Pars Family, the Renner Foundation, Robin Sanchez, the Roth family, the Basement Doctor, Wexner Family Charitable Fund, and several other anonymous gifts. We are truly grateful for your support. In addition, we've had several people helping us with other types of donations. We've had a chapter and a graduate help build training materials for our dogs. We've had in-kind donations from all over help us to furnish this campus. And we're so grateful each and every person that has participated in this project has made such a difference. I also want to recognize the community that we're moving into. I wanna thank New Albany for being supportive and opening doors and helping to lead us to new friends and new partners. Special thanks to the New Albany Company, City of New Albany, and the New Albany Chamber of Commerce for your ongoing partnership and support. And I would also like to thank those that have helped build this beautiful place. It took a village, maybe a city or a state, a lot of people have had their hands on making sure we built the most accessible and the best well-run kennels for this organization. I would like to start by thanking McCarthy Consulting and special thanks to Rusilli Construction and Moody Nolan Architects for our design and our build. Each of you brought several different subcontractors to this project. Everyone got engaged and I would like you all to know that our top construction partners before this project started, participated in a graduation, saw a placement, got to know the mission of Canine Companions, and it made a difference. We are thrilled to open the doors of 54,000 square feet of space that will further connect our students while staying on campus, enhance our training experience for our assistance dogs, and offer spaces where we can further engage and build our community of mission-focused support. While we are hosting our grand opening today, I am so proud to share that we have already put this campus to use. In the past month, we've hosted applicant interviews, team trainings, 
turn-ins for dogs in professional training, and we know this campus works. Thank you for making that impact, and thank you for making the dreams of so many a true reality. Good afternoon, and welcome to the North Central Campus of Canine Companions for Independence. My name is John McKinney, and I'm the chair of the National Board. <clears throat> for many years, the North Central Region has had to work in less than adequate facilities, yet they've been able to continue their work raising dogs, graduating teams, engaging volunteers, and fundraising. Now they'll have a facility in which they can better do their jobs. But a project like this takes a great deal of effort and commitment on the part of many people, and I'd like to thank some of those. First, I'd like to thank the National Board for making the commitment for the organization to ensure that this project would be completed. And I'd also like to thank each and every member of that board for making a personal financial commitment to the project. I'd also like to thank the regional board who under the leadership of Tom Clements undertook the capital campaign and also made, each member made a personal financial commitment to the project. I'd like to thank the staff for their perseverance to the years of having to work in the old facility and for their patience as this project has been planned and constructed. And finally, I'd like to thank the volunteers and the donors. I'd like to thank the volunteers for the many things that they do in many ways that support this organization. And of course, I'd like to thank the donors for making a personal commitment, financial commitment that made this project possible. So again, I wanna thank everybody who's been involved in this project, and I hope that you enjoy the afternoon. Be safe and be well. Hello and welcome again. My name is Paige Mazzoni, and I am the CEO of Canine Companions. And what an amazing day. We're in a pretty beautiful place and the future of North Central starts today. This is so exciting. This campus is such an important part of our future as an organization. We have so many more dogs to pair with so many more people to impact so many more lives. And this campus is now a very critical part of that future. That's because of several things. There are 48 kennels here. That means we can train a lot more dogs and place a lot more teams every year with a staff that's pretty darn good at doing that. We have accessible facilities and guest rooms, and as you've heard, that can make a huge difference. It means that some people who prior to this time couldn't come because they couldn't afford the hotel or couldn't stay in a hotel can now come and be a part of our program and our mission. It also provides a chance for people in team training to really bond with their classmates and create a special family that stays with them. Ever since being part of this organization, I've heard graduates talk about the incredible bonds they form with people in their team training class. And a lot of that happens sitting around at night after class is over, cooking meals together, hanging out. So now the graduates in this region can share those special bonds and have those strengthening ties as they move forward with their best friend. The facility also will allow us as we continue to expand our programs to have those programs come here. We have a program of service dogs for veterans with PTSD that can now begin to move in this area. We can look at expanding other kinds of programs here. Things that before we just didn't have the size or the scope or the ability to do in the North Central region. So it's exciting and this team is really exciting, excited and ready to take on those challenges. The campus has a vet clinic. It will allow us to further our veterinary partnerships and research partnerships in the area, which are important and can also help us in the long run meeting our goals. We'll have the ability to do more in our community, and we've already begun to form more strategic corporate partnerships through the building of this campus, and that will only continue. And finally, for our volunteers and members of our community in North Central, 
this is now home base. This is a place where you can come, you can have puppy classes, I'm sure you're gonna have some pretty good parties, and we can do some great fundraising and other activities here. And there is something magical about being able to do that on the campus where the mission is pulsing and living. It just will bring everybody in more and integrate people more and more into our mission, which is pretty magical. And finally, to the staff. This staff has worked for years in an environment that made them work extra hard, take extra steps. I actually attended team training here last year, and to watch the brilliance of our staff handling a remote training location and people coming from hotel rooms and having to move people into different spaces to accommodate a class in not a training room was incredibly impressive, and I can only imagine what they're gonna be able to do. The staff also raised money for this themselves. As you walk around this campus, which I hope all of you get to do someday, you'll see signs that the staff created because they paid for a room. So there's a huge debt of gratitude to you guys, not just that you've worked so hard and you deserve this, but also because you actually made yourselves part of this campus. And that's a pretty incredible legacy. Thank you to the National Board. As everyone has said, the National Board really did get behind this. This became a national campaign and something that we saw not as a regional opportunity, but as an opportunity for the entire organization. And that vision and that commitment really helped drive this forward. The Regional Board here has been incredible. They've worked hard to bring in donors. They've worked hard to get the community involved. They've done everything they could to help make this a reality. So thank you to all of you. And once again, to the staff, to all of you, to the leadership, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm incredibly impressed with you guys, and I'm very happy for you today. Thank you all for being here, and we, again, hope you all get to visit someday. Hi, Mayor Sloan Spalding here from the city of New Albany. As I'm often fond of saying, one of the best things about being a small town mayor is having the privilege of presiding over ribbon cuttings and grand openings for new businesses, restaurants, and retailers. And while things are a bit different under COVID, it in no way dampens my enthusiasm for welcoming one of our best partners, Canine Companions for Independence, right here to New Albany. Now, they have already been a great community partner for a number of years. You've probably seen them around town, maybe grabbing lunch at the Rusty Bucket or walking through Rose Run with the students, the trainers, and of course, those precious puppies. But right here in New Albany, we can now have a state-of-the-art facility where we can welcome in guests from 14 different states to train and live right here in our community. So again, everyone, please join me in welcoming Canine Companions to our community. I've been involved with Canine Companions since 2012 as a donor, and it's been my honor these past five and a half years to lead the, as president of the North Central Regional Board. Today, October 8th, is a dream come true for the North Central Region as we officially open this campus in New Albany, Ohio. The impact of the Canine Companions family in our new home with this new space and overnight accommodations will serve us for years to come. The New Albany community support, we cannot thank you enough for welcoming us into your community. I would also like to thank our staff, volunteers, fellow board members, and especially our donors for making this North Central campus a reality. The fundraising for this campus was a national effort across the country from all six regions, the National Home Office, our legion of volunteers, and a big thank you to my North Central Regional Board for driving these results. The things that I've learned and will always remember since becoming involved with Canine Companions, this community is a family. Volunteers, staff, and do donors dedicated and loyal. Exceptional dogs, really best in class. Great North Central Board members dedicated to the mission. Great camaraderie with the other regional board providing guidance, support, and advice and the impact our dogs make in people's lives when you give a dog a job. 
So thank you everyone and enjoy the day exploring our North Central Regional Campus. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Gwen Dudek, Program Director for the North Central Region. As we look around this beautiful property today, we can envision endless possibilities. This region has always been small, but mighty. As I think everyone here knows, we came from a 7,000 square foot building. It contained a few offices, 33 kennels, two training rooms, and one exercise yard for all of our dogs. When that facility was built in 1991, it was uh, termed the flagship for the organization. And from this flagship, the program grew. Uh, we placed about 10 to 15 dogs a year, but steadily we grew that and eventually exceeded 65 dogs a year from that small facility. Literally thousands of dogs were raised and returned for professional training to this center. And more than half of them went on to be graduate dogs, and we used that small building as a way to have home base or even the primary location for the work of the organization. A lot of magic happened out of those four walls. That facility helped us change lives. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Puppy raisers always say that when they return a dog, they give part of their heart. If we could put together all of the pieces of those hearts, um, the impact of that and measuring that is kind of impossible to capture. But because puppy raisers chose this mission and gave away these little pieces of their heart, their lives changed. And their gift created the opportunity for countless graduates to discover potential, build confidence, create common ground, and strengthen independence thanks to their unconditional partnership with their service dogs. And staff. Staff grew here, literally and figuratively. Our lives were changed. We became a team. We overcame challenges. We watched our families grow canine companions, families, and otherwise. And we always pushed to be all that we could with what we had. Strange as it may sound, we, there were initially mixed emotions about moving to this new campus. The North Central facility served us well. But just like any ship that served its time, our flagship began taking on water, literally, coming down through the ceilings and under the doors the reality set in that this building could really no longer serve our needs. So now we find ourselves in the middle of this beautiful campus, a campus that we've not yet occupied for a month, and yet in that time we've already brought 24 new dogs into training, bringing our current kennel numbers to over 50 dogs in residence at the Schultz Canine Center. We provided no cost housing to teams training students for the first time ever, ever in the history of this region. And because we had these guest rooms and this amazing training space and new leash hall, we've placed 17 new graduate teams this month. And more classes are planned throughout 2020. We are only beginning to understand what this campus will do for us, for our puppy raisers, and most importantly, for our graduates. With all of this being said, it's important to remember that a campus had been a vision, an idea, and a hope for many, many years. However, efforts to build it were always thwarted with either a greater need for the organization or a regional challenge. So it is especially important today to recognize that the reality of this beautiful campus happened because of the leadership provided by the Canine Companions team of today. Paige Mazzoni, Megan Kester, our national board, and our regional board. You guys made our dream come true. Thank you. My name is Dan Judy, and I, I became involved with Canine Companions 
in uh, 1986 when I met a young lady uh, while I was rehabbing at Dot Hall at OSU Hospital. Uh, this 12-year-old girl named Mindy had a service dog and her mother uh, brought the dog to the hospital to show me what the dog could do and I was amazed because back then I knew about seeing eye dogs uh, but I had never heard of service dogs. Uh, so she said, well, if you are interested in getting one, you ought to fill out the forms now because it takes two to three years to get a dog. So I filled out all the paperwork as quickly as I could and returned it. Um, unbeknownst to me, the company that I applied for was in the middle of merging with Canine Companions for Independence which kind of bumped me up on the list. Uh, so I was very fortunate because when I got out of the hospital, um, about three weeks after I got out of the hospital, I got a call from Canine Companions that they had someone in one of their classes that had to drop out, and would I be willing or able to come in and uh, work to get a service dog? I had no vehicle, I had no way to get there, but I certainly said, absolutely, I'll be there. <laughs> And I then proceeded to figure out ways to get myself, my wheelchair, uh, to and from uh, tr team training uh, every day for the 14 days, uh, which we managed to do. Uh, back then, Canine Companions had no real home headquarters. It was in uh, Orient, Ohio, in a house with a small barn in the back. Um, but the team training took place at Worthington Christian High School. Um, I received my first service dog, his name was Troubadour. Uh, I then uh, worked him for seven and a half years as a school teacher here in Columbus, Ohio. And uh, he assisted me in multiple ways. Uh, I really knew I had something special with Troubadour uh, one day when I was at the grocery store and I was reaching for a box off a shelf and at the time, my hands had atrophied. My wedding ring slipped off my finger and rolled under the counter. And I looked around and said, oh, I'm going to have to go up front and get a bag boy or somebody to help me get that uh, ring. And then I thought, wait a minute, I got this dog. Let's see what he can do. And with a couple of commands, I had him lay on his belly. He reached his paw under the counter, pulled the ring forward, hooked it on his tooth, jumped up and dropped it in my hand. And I realized then how much more independent I was going to be with the aid of my service. And I ended up getting my replacement dog for Troubadour, and his name was Inganito. And he worked for eight years with me and also in the middle school in Columbus. And the interaction with kids was always great because the kids grew to see him as a working dog and learn how to behave around a working dog. Uh, that was something I tried real hard to under make my students understand that a service dog, a working dog, does not get treated the same way as a pet. And so my students, a lot of times, uh, it, was, it was important for me when they would say to me, I never knew that dog was in your room. And I go, yeah, because he's not here to be in the way. He's here to help me when I need him. And so they, they started to see more and more of uh, his ability to pick up things for me, uh, just be there and push the doors and help me get through my day. Well, then he worked for eight years. He was retired, and I went in for my third service dog. My, uh, my second, our third dog, his name was Sir Balin. He was named after one of the Knights of the Round Table. And he was an outstanding dog. And it really made me appreciate because my first two dogs, I worked quite closely with Canine Companions in, in that I worked as a uh, regional ambassador, a guest speaker, and then as a board uh, director's member. Uh, I got to see the growth of our Delaware office, and I got to see how the company works from the inside. Um, then getting my third dog, I realized just how much the training had changed and the breeding program had grown uh, throughout uh, the country. 
and it was remarkable. When I got Balin, the very first day I had him, I had to take my car to get fixed, and I had to go way across a parking lot, and I thought I had hooked him onto my chair, and I took off across the parking lot, and then I realized there's no dog next to me. And I thought of Inganito and thought, oh Lord, I'm gonna be chasing him. And I turned around and Balin was picking up his leash and running to catch up with me. And I knew then that I had something special. Uh, Balin was the first of all three of my dogs at, at that point to make it a full 10 years as a service dog. He worked right up to the end of his uh, working career um, and without any complaints ever, just was amazing. Um, unfortunately, Balin did not last as long in retirement, um, which was sad, but uh, I had also received my fourth service dog, which is my current service dog. His name is Michael Three. Uh, we just call him Michael, uh, which I also thought was interesting because when I got Michael, they gave me the heads up on the two uh, classes of dogs that were being put together to make our class. And I was looking and there were M dogs, Michael, Malia, Malcolm, and those uh, several others. And then there was the M class in there. And there was a Nancy and a Nicholas. And I said to my wife, oh my goodness, what if I get one of these two dogs? because I have twin sons and their names are Michael and Nicholas. And uh, sure enough, I came home with a dog named after one of my sons, making the other son jealous. Uh, but needless to say, Michael has been an outstanding addition to our family. He's worked with me now eight years. Luckily for Michael, he only had to work three years as a uh, working dog in the school system because I retired at that uh, point. As a recipient of a CCI service dog, um, I was overjoyed being able to work with a dog. I was then extremely honored when the director at that time asked me if I would become a regional ambassador and go around the state and speak to different organizations and uh, help raise funds for canine campaigns which I've always felt was an outstanding organization. Um, at the time, we were still in our farmhouse and the barn in Orient, Ohio. Uh, shortly after I became a regional ambassador, the, board, uh, the, dir the director of Canada Campaigns at the time, Jim Cunningham, asked me if I would like to serve on the board of directors. Uh, I was very honored for that and was absolutely willing to do it. And then we were broached with the idea that we needed to build a new facility uh, and move to Delaware. Uh, and then my father invited me to a uh, Father's Day Christmas or a sunrise service at his church. He said, you got to come because there's this new guy who's going to be talking and you got to meet him. And I said, okay. We went and we listened to the man speak. And the whole time he spoke, he sat and watched me with my dog. Well, the man speaking happened to be Jack Hanna, the new director of the Columbus Zoo. And after he was done speaking, he came directly to me, sat down beside me, and started talking to me about my dog. And he wanted to know all about Canine Campaigns for Independence, which was a kind of a foot in the door uh, to getting him on the board as well. Uh, having Jack Hanna's name didn't hurt when it came to fundraising, and it helped us raise the money we needed to build the uh, facility in Delaware. We were very proud of that facility back in 1990 when we did the groundbreaking and we opened that building up. But we also knew right away, immediately, that it was too small. It was a facility that was built with the idea that we had land and we could hopefully expand in the area that we were. Uh, Unfortunately, that didn't work out as well as we wanted, and the fundraising and the building opportunities didn't uh, come along as we wanted them to. And so from that point until now, uh, CCI has been struggling to work through the North Central region, uh, the office that has been woefully too small for 
all of the workers and all of the animals that they have been putting through that facility, but somehow they've managed to do it for these 30 long years. And today, we're here because of the hard work of all the people at CCI to build this brand new facility in New Albany, which is by far the most stunning thing I've seen in a long time. Uh, and it fulfills all of the wishes that we had way back in 1990 when we finished the Delaware Center. We knew this is really what we needed, but we just didn't have the funds and the uh, organization to get it done. But now here we are, and here it is. And, and finally, I would like to thank everyone involved with Canine Companions for Independence. Everyone from our national headquarters to our regional offices to all of the employees at Canine Companions, all of the volunteers, the puppy raisers, the people that are integral parts of this organization that make the placement of service dogs as successful as they have been and the follow-up and all of the things that they do to continue the program and make it grow into the future.
Well, we did it. We have built this campus for all of you. We all look forward to a safer time and future opportunities to personally tour each and every one of you through this campus. And we're so glad we've spent the time together today to give you a view of what we've done, all of us, together for a really bright future. Now that the doors have opened and the ribbon has been cut at the new North Central campus, we invite each and every one of you to connect, to find different ways to connect with our organization and this campus. With a new campus, we found all kinds of great volunteer activities for our future to help us with the care of our campus and the engagement of our mission. We have groups and chapters all over this 14 state region and across the country, and I encourage you to find someone close to you. Get involved with this incredible mission. And consider helping us reach our fundraising goal. Making a meaningful gift today is finishing this fundraising ch chapter and helping us to furnish this beautiful campus and all of the stories and memories ahead of us. And our best way to engage, tell someone about Canine Companions. Share the mission of this organization and your connection. We guarantee they'll stick with you. Thank you so much for all of you that have made today possible, for all of you that have helped build this campus, and for all of the future opportunities we will engage with together. Stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you.